I like to challenge myself when I play video games. If you look at what I update on the channel, this should go without saying, but one of the less obvious ways that I like to flaunt my masochism is by using strategies in games that are often seen as subpar, impractical. For Fire Emblem, this means, of course, using units that are all around atrocious. Seeing a bad unit and making them good is really fun. I'd never argue that they're actually good, but taking on a challenge and completely owning it feels incredibly satisfying. That being said, of course, I like to know what's good and abuse it. There's no reason not to use the best of the best with what you're given, right? For the most part, I follow this, but on occasion, in Fire Emblem's case, there's a unit that I know is good, but I just don't like using them. It depends on who we're talking about, but just because a unit is good, that does not mean that I will pick them for every playthrough. With both of these in mind, I figured it would be a lot of fun to go through some units that I love using even though they're really bad, but to add an extra layer to it, we'll also be looking at good units that I don't really like using too. Of course, we should define what makes a good unit, right? Well, it's a pretty standard and boring definition. For the most part, a good unit is determined by their base stats, their growth rates, availability, and utility, all on the hardest difficulty. There are other factors as well, some of them vary from game to game, but these are the ones that are the easiest to explain, generally speaking, they're the most important. I won't be covering every game, but for the ones I am covering, let's go oldest to newest. Let's start with... um... yeah, clearly I didn't talk about this one enough yesterday, Genealogy of the Holy War. As I said in that video, I really love this game, and truth be told, there aren't really any units that I don't like using. I feel like every one of them, good or bad, fills some kind of niche for use. Finn, for example, gets the Brave Lance very early on, and the availability he has is ridiculous. Noish is your only unit who can crit from the very start, meaning he can be very high risk and... Uh, I don't know, there is a reward, I guess. And then there's Arden. Oh boy, this guy. It's not hard to see why Arden is so bad. And even if it was, literally anybody who's talked about this game has mentioned why Arden is so bad. For those who don't know, keeping it brief, he's really slow, he lags behind your other units because of his abysmal movement. Despite using swords, he has serious accuracy issues, and his only skill is Vantage, which is really ill-suited to a unit like Arden. What Vantage does is it allows him to attack first if he gets under half health. But he doesn't really hit all that hard, so... oops. What's funny about all this is that all of the reasons stated above are exactly why people love using Arden. His atrocity is so... calculated. You can tell by the writing of the game itself, this guy was meant to be a joke. And it's very charming in a way. He's a total goofball that nobody takes seriously with easily the worst stats in the entire game. He gets bonus points for being able to use almost any weapon type upon promotion, magic included. His stats are still awful and the added weapon types don't do much for him. But it's all part of the Arden experience. You can't watch his secret event for getting the Pursuit Ring which is actually the one major benefit that Arden has, and not fall in love with the guy. He's silly, he's terrible, and I don't know, that's why I love using him. Looking on the flip side, for the best units in Binding Blade, it's not as easy as finding the worst in Genealogy. In FE4, Arden's the worst unit moving on, but in Binding Blade, you could argue that Marcus is the best unit. Yeah, he falls off, but without him, the early game would be a nightmare. And with him, it's enjoyable. There's also Percival who, I mean just look at these stats, that's all you need to know. Meanwhile, while all of your other units are missing with their hits rates in the 60s and 70s, Rutger over here is wrecking face with hit rates in the 80s at worst. I'm in the camp who thinks Rutger is the best unit in the entire game, but of the units I've mentioned, there is one other unit who is undeniably in the running for best unit in the entire thing, who I've never enjoyed using. Lady. Now, again, this isn't a list of me trying to convince you that these good units are secretly bad. Number five will surprise you. Milady's hard mode bonuses give her ridiculously good bonuses. On top of already having good flyer utility, 
and of course, her high movement is always appreciated. It all comes down to one thing, and it's something that I alluded to while I was gushing about Rutger. This game's hit rates. I'm a big fan of Binding Blade, but if there's one thing that I just can't handle in Fire Emblem, it's shaky hit rates. I play Fire Emblem very paranoid, and if hit rates aren't above 75 displayed hit, it's really not good enough in my book. Granted, Milady should have better accuracy than your standard units, purely based on how good her stats are. Fe6 lances just don't cut it. For what it's worth, this is also an issue for Marcus once he starts falling off, but beforehand he's just so reliable and even kind of tanky to an extent that I can handle the misses. Percival also has this problem, again to an extent, but while Milady's stats are great, Percival's are actually just insane. Who thought this was balanced? Also, uh, if you've ever seen Rutger miss in this game, let me know. Legitimately, I never have. Milady, meanwhile, doesn't have the best res stat and is weak to bows in a triple effective damage game. For fully optimized play, none of these things are a major issue, but I like to play with a mixture of optimization and style. I plan everything out, but I like to take risks. I like using Arden, that should be telling enough. And because of the incredibly shaky accuracy that plagues Binding Blade, personally, I can just never enjoy using her. Yeah, most of my hard mode Binding Blade playthroughs just boil down to Rutger being crazy. Leave me alone! But the later GBA games give you weapons with much better accuracy than Binding Blade does. And Blazing Sword, er, what, FE7, for example, Lances have anywhere between 10 to almost 30 more accuracy on them, leading to far more reliable hit rates. While this doesn't fare too well for a Myrmidon like Gi, it's far better for Lance and Axe units. Keeping on the focus of Lances, units like Marcus, again, Lowen and Oswin are much more fun to use since, you know, they can actually hit reliably. Three Lance users, however, that are still a little dicey for me are Sane, Kent, and Florina. Sometimes. See, it depends. If you play Lin Mode, they're fine. I think Lin Mode is stupid and terrible and dumb and I hate it and it's needless and it's stupid and dumb. Needless to say, I never play Lin Mode when I play FE7. And when you do ignore Lin Mode, these three are far less reliable. Now, I think Sane and Kent are still pretty solid. They have cav utility, decent base stats, access to javelins that don't completely neuter them. Uh, they can switch to swords if axes are an issue. I still think Lowen is much better, but just because Lowen is there doesn't mean Sane and Kent can't be good too, right? Just use all of them. Florina, on the other hand, even though she's still good just for her utility alone, uh, I can't. I really don't like using her. Jeez, even with Linmon in mind, I don't like using her that much, but I can at least make something of her in that case. Without Lin Mode, she joins at level 1, she's got really bad stats, it's hard to feed her kills because of those stats, and you get another flyer with much better stats shortly after. Now, again, comparing units because they have the same class is nothing but stupid, but it's important to note here because in Hector Hard Mode, the hardest difficulty mode and therefore the one that we're using to judge this, your unit slots are very limited. Pegasus Utility is nice, but... I feel like Fiora and even Farina are enough. At the very least, I get more enjoyment out of using them. I get why Florina is good. I'm even doing this with only getting her to level 10 in mind, since at this point, I'm only going to be using her for a utility. But I just don't like having to keep an eye on her. I'm not even all that crazy about her character, which, honestly, talking about a personal just for fun playthrough would nullify all these problems. And I get that's more of a personal thing. But, I mean, that's what this whole video is about, so, uh... Enough about flyers! Let's talk about the other kind of animal you can ride atop. Horses! Cavaliers and Paladins, overall, I think are the best units in the GBA games. They have high move, they're well balanced all around, but still have strong points, access to swords and lances, axes too until Sacred Stones, for weapon triangle dominance, durability, the works. When looking at specific units, you can see this shine through because there are so many good Cavs and Paladins. It's a checklist going through them. Lance, Allen, Marcus, Zealot, Percival, Sane, Kent, Lowen, Isadora, Marcus again, Seth, Dussel, Franz... 
Franz. I'll keep Franz brief because it's possibly the most petty reason for not liking to use a unit, but I just really don't like using Cavaliers in Sacred Stones. Kyle and Ford have their own issues, but at least they make Chapter 5X a bit more bearable. Franz, as a long-term unit, he's incredible, but I've just never liked training him up, and that's because I kinda sorta feed most potential kills to Franz to Seth. And I know, I know, comparing almost any unit in the entire series to Seth is a bad idea. But whereas I get flyer utility with Vanessa, axe usability with units like Garcia and Ross, axes are my personal favorite weapon to use in Fire Emblem, and healing with Molder, I can just never be bothered to deal with anyone else in the early game. I understand this isn't sound logic for optimal play, but I just never find myself using him. I know he's the best unit in the game after Vanessa and, well, Seth. I didn't have to tell you that one, but I used him once, got bored, and just never used him again. Unlike Franz, there's never been a unit in Path of Radiance that I've only used once. I've played this game so many times, and I love using every character so much, I, I can't help it. Uh, brief side note, I know I said I'd be looking at the hardest difficulty for all these, but for Path of Radiance, I'm not looking at Maniac. The logic is largely similar between the two difficulties, but U.S. difficult is kind of a great to be the best middle ground for talking about Path of Radiance difficulty. Maniac mode is just dumb. But, geez, who to pick from Path of Radiance that's bad? Basically anyone can be viable in a fun playthrough because of bonus EXP. But no, there's one man that stands above the rest. Bad bases comes with a useless skill, unavailable until almost the halfway point. I am, of course, talking about the guy who somehow managed to survive my Iron Man and despite all the favoritism, only got 26 kills. There he is, Devdon, 26. Next Iron Man I do, he's making the top five, I don't care. Devdon is such a weird case. I always felt like he showed up completely out of nowhere, more so than any other character. He's literally just there, one chapter, and you can recruit him, that's it. I feel like every other playable character in this game, bar maybe Kalil and Largo, have some kind of purpose to the story and theme of Path of Radiance. Tefton just likes looking at flowers and sticks with you because hurting children is bad. It's so weird! I love it! Speaking of weird though, have you seen the growth rates on this guy recently? His bases are pretty bad, but his growth rates are impressive. I mean 35% speed is pretty bad, but 70% HP? 45% defense, 60% strength? Why is his strength growth that high? I'm not trying to say his growths make him good, just that they're way better than I would expect. And because Path of Radiance has the bonus EXP system, you can actually make him a viable unit pretty easily. Unlike a lot of the other units who could use the BXP dump up to this point, Devdon has a B rank in lances, allowing him to use most lances right off the bat. I'm thinking the effective lances, killer lances, spears, stuff like that. Because of this and his 60% strength growth, this means he's very uh, financially effective. He doesn't need forges to use powerful weapons right off the bat, and in a few chapters, you can get him to A rank so he can use silver lances. And again, none of this makes him good or anything. So many other units are far better users of the BXP that you get, but I mean, come on, he's Devdon. He has by far the funniest support in the series with Largo. Devdon makes this paper man thing that, that can talk, and Largo is impressed, but when Largo sees it without Devdon around, it doesn't talk back to him, so Largo crumples it up. It screams in agony as Largo thinks he killed it. And I won't even say what happens in the A support, but God, it's so freaking weird! I can't help but talk about him a lot because Come on, it's Path of Radiance. But at the very least, if, if you've seen my tier list video, you know I think of Devdon in a pretty low manner in terms of viability. I say some more stuff about him in that video, so check him out there if you want, but long story short, he's weird, and I like weird. Next. Actually, no, frick that. <laughs> yeah, I said frick. Let's keep talking about Path of Radiance. Specifically, we're gonna talk about Kieran. 
I love this guy. I use him in every single playthrough. He's crazy good. Great base stats, great growth, best class, has axes by default, which are the best weapon type in Path of Radiance, Kanto, and he's even got silly stuff like Gamble and his personality. He's one of my favorite characters to use in the entire franchise. Never get enough of him. And despite most of that transferring over to Radiant Dawn, he's pretty mediocre in that game. I wouldn't quite say he's bad. In fact, if we're only looking at the Crimean chapters, he's actually pretty good. But as soon as the Royal Knights merge with the Grail Mercenaries, you don't have to try too hard to convince people that he's bad. You have better axe users, you have better mounted units, you have better utility units, you have better all-around units. The only perk Kieran will really have at this point is that he's better off than pretty much all of the other Royal Knights. Uh, but even then, you can argue that Marsha's better. But do I still use him? You bet. I use Titania as well, but who cares? Two Axe Paladins is not a bad thing. His base level and stats are a little behind what the Grail Mercenaries have at this point, but Kieran not only gets 3-9 to catch up a little bit, assuming he kills next to nobody in Part 2 because you want that bonus EXP, he also gets access to Paragon at the base. Paragon is the key to making any bad unit good, and Kieran is no exception. You can easily get him three or four levels in 3-9 alone and still rescue all of the houses within the BXP limit. Radiant Dawn is far from the kindest game to horse units, but the funny thing is this doesn't bother Kieran all that much. In Joffrey's Charge, nobody wants to kill anything. It's a BXP chapter and that's it. Eh, maybe he can kill the boss, maybe, but probably not. In Alencia's Gambit, you're indoors, but if Kieran even gets to see combat, it's against the group of units he's close to already. Then in part three, the only chapter that has terrain he needs to worry about is the stupid bridge, which there are plenty of ways to get around. Part four, I always like to send him with Alencia into Martin's team. I feel like the terrain screws him over the least, and with a beast foe, he can actually handle most of the cats and tigers on the initial island by himself. Then in the tower, there's no movement penalty. So honestly, I feel like Kieran worries about the nerfs to horses in this game out of all the horse units the least which is legitimately kind of cool. He's still not that good purely because he's only around for seven chapters before you get to the tower, and at least two of those chapters, he shouldn't be doing much of anything. But he's fun to use. Definitely the best of the bad units I've talked about so far, for whatever that's with. We're gonna skip a few games ahead for this one, going to Shadows of Valencia, another one of my favorites. I know a lot of people hate the map design in this game, but I don't know, I kind of like it. Well. Alms maps, anyway. They're fun. Seligas... I don't know, I like the boat maps. Okay, in fairness, I guess the devs realized that forcing you to use nothing but grounded units, the freaking desert and swamp maps, was a terrible idea. So before any of them, you recruit Kala, Paula and Catria. Paula, while I never loved her character or anything, makes these maps actually playable. Not fun, but playable. It's almost mandatory that you dump all of your resources into her, make her as good as you can, and blow through as much as you can. In doing so, you make Katria much harder to use, and that grind I've never particularly found to be fun. At all. Unlike most of the other good units on this list, I actually do use Katria in my playthroughs of this game. I mean, no reason not to, you can bring anybody you want for every chapter until the last one. But trying to get her leveled up, for me, it's always such a pain. Admittedly, this is less on Catria and more on the stupid desert and swamp maps, but that small handful of chapters in part three that you have Paula and Catria, and Est, I guess, that aren't desert maps, I don't know, I still don't like using her. I want to wreck scrubs with Paula. At this point, I'll have other units that may have less move, but get the job done for me, personally, much better than Catria. Like Saber, Kamui, Dean, Jenny, Leon. Even units that I know aren't as good, but I still really like using, looking at you, May, I find myself using far more than Catria. Even Est, if I'm being honest, just to ignite that challenge runner in me. Gotta make Est good, you know? It's, it's Est. Once Catria can promote, things are a little different, since being able to deal super effective damage to terrors is really nice on Celica's route. But, I don't know, by that point, I have a strong attachment to Paula, and with all of the effort I've put into making Est viable, I want to see more results from her. Gatria is just that awkward middle child that's missing out on what makes me enjoy using the others more. Yeah, that's literally what she is. It's called wordplay. Good writing.
like, comment, and subscribe. And now we end this video off with the big one, three houses. This game has so much customization that it's hard to narrow down exactly what makes a good unit. And instead of doing any of that, let's look at some of the most important units in the entire game, your lords. Byleth doesn't count as a lord, but they're ridiculously good as well. Anyway, what's unique about the lords of this game is that they're actually all really good. How good your lord is absolutely will determine how easy or difficult a time you have with certain chapters. Look at you, chapter 13. And I can go on and on about Claude's good aspects specifically, but this video isn't about him. Don't get your chance. No, this video is about the other two lords, Edelgard and Dimitri. If you know anything about these two, you know how ridiculously powerful they are. Ridiculous stats, great personal skill post time skip. I mean, really pre time skip too, but Edelgard and Claude have it too. Battalion Wrath and Battalion Vantage, which makes for a crazy enemy phase. And he's really well equipped to deal with what the Blue Lions route throws at him. Edelgard, on the other hand, is super straightforward. She's got great stats and a personal weapon that, if used right, lets her move again if she hits the opponent. That's really all that needs to be said. This, of course, applies to part two when the maps are at their most difficult and or tedious, but they both stand out in part one as well. And I really hate it because even though I really, really love these two, in my heart, they just don't match up to Claude. He is the far worse units out of the three of them. Still really freaking good. Potential to be the best unit in the game after those two and Byleth. Again, depending on who you ask. But oh, I just love the guy so much. His personality and his story are among my favorite in the entire series. And unlike Dimitri, you never have to waste time with him not being on a wyvern in part two. And Nadelgard, I don't know as much as her as I do with Dimitri and Claude, but I am aware that she requires more tutoring in part one to get the skills that she would like to have. And Claude requires a lot less. Still, take Dimitri's enemy phase and Edelgard's player phase, and it's clear that he lags behind. I think by the very end, he becomes a better unit than both of them, but especially in part one, he's a lot worse. But I can never bring myself to not pick Golden Deer. I'm post time skip in a Blue Lions run that I started a month after the game came out, and that's about all I've done. Meanwhile, I finished three Golden Deer runs, all casual, and I'm both preparing an off-stream optimized run for them, maybe get into some LTCing, while also streaming a maddening attempt, which is completely blind. I love the Golden Deer. I vastly prefer the story for them over all the others in the game, although Blue Lions is much closer than the other two, and Claude, as a character, I just like him the most. They're all fun units to use, but I give the win to Claude for this one too. Long video, but I just want to make one point clear before I end it off. Use whoever you want. Good, bad, meme, whatever. Use DevDon instead. Thanks for watching. <laughs>